Okay, good. I think we're online. Uh, let's uh, start the class because well, it's wow, twelve oh one right now. Let's uh, let's uh, get this show on the road, as they say in Texas, I guess. Anyways, um, all right. Mm. All right. So today we're going to do slight reviewing of things. Um, let's see here. Uh, there they are. There we are. Okay, first things first. Uh, during our labs, I have noticed that a lot of us uh, have uh, certain, mm, I wouldn't say problems, but um, issues, I don't know. Anyways, something along that line, uh, as far as using the proper screw drivers, uh, with the associated uh, footprints of the screws. So let's go over that again. Uh, because, you know, one day you're going to be out of school. And if you do that, uh, it's not going to look good on you. All right. So I want you to be fully armed with the knowledge. Uh, so, uh, so you can do the proper things. All right. So first things first, when it comes to screwdrivers. All right. You zoom in a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So here is a footprint of a slotted screwdriver. We don't call this thing a flathead. However, you might hear that on the construction side that a lot of people are calling this thing a flathead. Just don't correct them, okay? You know that the, what they mean is the slotted screwdriver. But the reason for that is that we call it a slotted screwdriver. It's this one right here. Here's the footprint of the screw, and here is the shape of the screwdriver's head. Right here, they go together. Now, the reason why we don't call this a flat head is, do I have the picture of that or not? Um, no. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, right here, this is a flathead screw shape. The shape of the head is the flat on top. So sometimes when you need things to be flash with the surface, you would use the flathead screw, okay? As opposed to a mushroom head, like this one right here. The shape of the screw is, uh, you know, bulging on the top. It looks like a mushroom, right? So that's why we call this not a flathead, although right here, you could see this is a flathead screw. It's just a coincidence. But the shape of the footprint is called slotted. So here's a slotted screwdriver. Next, this is the shape of the Phillips footprint and a Phillips screw head. All right. There are some other ones that are similar to Phillips, but just a straight X type of a thing, it is called a Phillips. And make sure that if it's Phillips, it's Phillips, because sometimes if you see something else, then it looks like a Phillips, but it could be other, uh, I forgot what that was. Uh, then there are many other shapes uh, done by the industry, all right? So these two, this is probably the first screw uh, footprint that was established a uh, long time ago when people invented screws. Right? Then here's the Phillips. Then here is the Allen. And sometimes you have those Allen keys with like an L-shape type of a uh, screwdriver type of thing, and they, they could be on, you know, tied to a ring or something like that. Uh, but this is the shape of the Allen. Do not interchange those because you won't be able to give enough torque and you will be struggling with making a proper termination when uh, uh, or proper mounting. Match the screwdriver footprint or the screwdriver head shape to the footprint of the screw. Then right here, we got something that's called a Torx. It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six kind of uh, six-armed star, six-pointed star. Uh, so that's called a Torx. 
and this is the shape of that now some of the torx screwdrivers they would have a hole in the middle right there so it will be hollow right in the middle and that would be accompanied by the pin sticking out from the middle of the screw head and they will be so-called security screws so uh, sometimes uh, if you don't want just anyone to uh, you know with just a regular set of tools to mark with the stuff that you're doing uh, there could be certain type of equipment that uh, you know you just don't want anybody to get in there you would get that little bit of an extra level of protection so you could you just couldn't use the regular torx um, uh, screwdriver uh, with that screw with so-called security screws and then you know security screws have different shapes there are different ones uh, sometimes some of the triangular ones and whatnot but these are the basic screwdrivers that we're talking about okay uh, now and here comes the robertson screwdriver it's just a square okay so that's the footprints of the of the uh oops i just pressed something okay uh, and here are some references. Uh, you have that already. This uh, this uh, posted like in, this here presentation is already posted in one of the uh, right at the beginning somewhere. Uh, but we just I just thought I would revisit that because uh, I can see people struggling with uh, with getting this. Do not exchange those shapes. All right. Now, when it comes to um, the sizes. For example, the common sizes of a Robertson. The most common sizes of Robertson screwdrivers are, well, green and red. Right? Green is called Robertson number one. Red is called Robertson number two. Red is slightly bigger here than the green. Okay. Then you have the smaller one that sometimes you're going to use. It's the yellow one. And uh, then here is the black, which is, you know, so black, red, green, and yellow, that would be the most common ones. These are the far extremes here. Um, like this is a really small and that would be really big, even bigger than the black. Uh, so uh, that's as far as this, you know, screwdriver. So if you have those, especially the red, which is probably... Yeah, well, you know what? These green and red, they're the most uh, interchangeably. And I just put those little check marks uh, to uh, for you to uh, to know that uh, which screw heads or screw uh, type, screwdriver types we need for uh, for our course, mostly, all right? Then there are Phillips sizes, all right? Uh, here is the, you know, they don't have colors, but uh, this Phillips number one, Phillips number two, and Phillips number three okay of course the phillips number one is uh, the smallest phillips someone's got the microphone on please turn it off unless you have a question to ask or unless you want to pipe in and say something okay but just make sure so we don't um. there we go i think Quinn, has you, no, you're okay. All right, everybody's muted now. Thank you so much. All right, so uh, <clears throat> uh, number one, number two, number three. The number two and three are the probably the most common ones. It's the number one is a little bit smaller, all right? And there will be the screw sizes, which we haven't gone over that, but I would encourage you to investigate the screw sizes. Like, for example, um, the six uh number six screws these would be the screws that uh, mount the mm, the for example the assembly of the switch or a receptacle to the box remember when i say if you're missing those screws just get the ones from the closet that say 632s so here's the size of the screw and the 32 is the pitch of the thread so okay. um so uh that's uh you know that's that's as far as the sizes of the screws you might want to investigate uh this part of the uh thing we, we haven't gone over that all right now here is the slotted screwdriver 
What was it? Uh, please, I said, please do not say flat head. Okay, this term is reserved for the shape of the screw head. So we have this thing also in writing here. Okay, uh, and they go by the sizes. Uh, see, they go by. They don't go by number one or two. We just go uh, by the three sixteenths of an inch and quarter of an inch. And this is the blade width that we are talking about. All right. So this would be the most common ones. Then uh, after that, uh, after that, we get uh, towards the um, um, like so-called miniature screwdrivers. So the uh, smaller ones um, as far as the slotted screwdrivers. And then you can go up as well with that. But the most common sizes would be three sixteenths of an inch and quarter of an inch. All right. And that's as far as the screwdriver's heads uh, that uh, that I wanted to touch uh, touch on, touch upon. Okay, all right. So um, when we got that of the way, we haven't talked about the pigtails. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown. We I, okay. I already gave you the rundown on the pigtails uh, just before every lab that we had uh, with the pigtails. But let's just um, uh, let's just review some of that concept uh, just again, so it just stays with you. All right. Now uh, I will just have to make sure that this PDF document is uploaded into the posted lecture notes, so you could download that, and you could uh, visit some of the suggested uh, links that I am uh, uh, that that I chose, you know, to be useful. Uh, so we're not, we're not going to play those uh, here, but uh, by all means, later on, just please review some of that stuff. All right, so this would be the wire nuts. Uh, they used to be called morets, and sometimes people still call them morets, but the reason why they used to be called morets only because moret was the comp the only company that was producing those some time ago. Some time ago. Same as the NMD90 cable, uh, the oh, Romex was the company that used to produce. So quite often you will hear the terminology that somebody said, can you bring me some Romex cable? Uh, which means that they mean the NMD90. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, my voice is getting a little bit raspy. All right. <clears throat> yeah. There we go. That's what happens to a teacher when they talk a lot. All right. Um, so this would be the pigtails. And the reason why we need to do pictures, like for example, if you have a lot of wires in the device box, right? For example, this one right here. Um, then, uh, well, you should only put one conductor in the screw terminal. Or if you use the backstabbing terminals, which is at the back there, they're called backstabbing terminals. I would encourage you to try to mm, stay away from those and the reason for that is that you don't know what the what what the shape of those connectors is because they're all covered. You just you just strip the wire and poke it into the hole, and uh, you know, hoping for the best, I suppose. Right? That uh, you're hoping, you're assuming that the connector is in good shape, that uh, that little lever, uh, well, piece of metal, is not uh, not bent out of shape, and uh, you know, so. When you use the screw terminals, you can see what the connection uh, looks like, right? And if there's something that needs to be corrected, you can, all right? So, uh, uh, so yeah, that's why we make pigtails. You know, we can make pigtails to join wires that need to be joined, like interconnected within the device box, or if you have more than one wire going uh, to get getting going together and they have to be connected to one of the screw terminals, then you should use one. So you would make that pigtail uh, and that would help you to have one uh, wire. Now, sometimes those wires are, you know, when you get into existing installations and then you, you need to replace a receptacle, uh, then, well, you can see that you, you will find that some of the, excuse me, <clears throat> that some of the connections are, or some of the device boxes are in better shape than others. So you could use the pigtails to extend uh, the wires so they are at the comfortable length. All right. 
Now, this next picture, this next picture here shows the different colors of the of the well twist on connectors, wire nuts, wire connectors, morets, all right, whatever they're called. Right? Now, sometimes people say, okay, uh, the orange are smaller than the yellow ones, and then there's the black ones that are bigger than the orange ones and all the yellow ones or whatnot. Well, it works for the most part. If, if 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 you use the color code that is implemented by whatever company made them but now everybody and their brother's dog is making them so rather than looking at the colors of the of the wire nuts or the wire connectors or twist on connectors just look at the box and uh, and, and 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 read the specifications on the box uh, as far as how many wires you can fit in the uh, uh, in that particular connector, because they are size they are sized. Okay. Now, here is the cross section. If uh, somebody X-ray that and or cut this thing, here is the plastic or PVC housing, non-conductive. And over here, you could see a pre-twisted pre-twisted wire conductors now right away and i just want you to make a note of that and i i left it on purpose what's wrong with this picture is anybody able to see what's wrong with this picture here i'll give you a couple seconds a couple of seconds Nobody can see. That's okay. Um, see what happens is that the thread on the wire connectors. Okay, I see someone. Tristan says the conductor isn't at the bottom of the moret. Uh, thank you for. Thank you for speaking up, but that's not what I meant. All right, if you look at this, which way does it turn? It turns clockwise, righty tidy. So the direction of the turn would be this way here. Okay. This how this would be how this connector would bite into the wires and make a connection this way here like here okay like this way <laughs> which are which way are the wires pre-twisted the wires are pretty twisted pre-twisted backwards here see they are pre-twisted this way so if you pre-twisted the wires in the counterclockwise which will be the opposing way to how this wire nut closes in on the connectors, on the co conductors, then by twisting it the clockwise, you would be untwisting the pre-twisted wires. You would be forcing them to untwist. So in order for this to be correct, these wires would have to be pre-twisted the other way than, they, than, that's, than, than, than what the picture shows. Right. Always pay attention to that kind of stuff. And why do we pre-twist wires? There is that school of pre-twisting and there's that school of not pre-twisting wires uh, or conductors uh, before you put them on. And even on some of the boxes, uh, when you purchase the wire connectors, it says no pre-twisting no pre necessary. Well, uh, we already established uh, that uh, if you have, uh, well, up to three wires, the force of the wire nut twisting would actually produce a twist inside. Right? Now, if you have more than three wires, 
there is a chance that one of the wires would be in the middle of the tree and the thread will have no chance of making contact with that wire that is being held just by the force of squeezing so that wire just would be not connected not making a connection with the thread the thread would not bite in it and they only will just have that much weaker connection now what happened what's the problem with that the problem with that is that uh, once those connections are made some of them stay for years that way and what happens during you know as the time passes uh, temperatures go up and down it's mostly the temperatures so things expand and contract expand and contract just by the temperatures, some of the wires, uh, there is a slight possibility that they could be wiggled out of the connection or or um, still be connected, but they will be so-called, as I call it, partially connected. Uh, so a partial connection, we already established what happens with, with when we have a partial connection. If there is some device or a load that requires bigger amount of current, then, uh, uh, you know, it's still going to, draw the current through that partial connection which means that that connection is going to heat up because if it's a partial connection there's going to be a little bit of a resistance happening because things are not connected properly and the resistance would call uh, would cause oxidation and oxidation would cause more resistance and more resistance would cause more heat and things would pile up like that in a vicious circle until if there's a big load that's that requires uh, a current that is big enough you could actually start a fire that way all right now let me uh um all right so here's that okay here's some stuff that you could see uh right on the boxes now when it comes to this here yes this is a pre-twist in the correct direction see that right here the wire knot or wire connector goes righty tidy and the wires are produced in the same way righty tidy okay and this one says one fit one size fits all take that with a grain of salt uh, because if you have uh, too many wires or you know, wires that are too many wires of certain thick gauge then uh, you know you might run, run into problems what you don't want is you don't want the connection to be so tight that it actually will well explode not just like you know i'm not talking about explosion i'm talking instead of implode i'm talking explode it would actually push the whole housing apart if you get too many wires and if you try to go too hard on this thing the other problems could be is you got to make sure that just before you install the the wire knot on though the connector conductors make sure you trim them to length here you don't want anything to stick out longer than the other wires because the thread is going to grab onto these here and it's going to push that connector forward this way and uh, if there's one wire that sticks out it could actually poke through that plastic and we're going to have a situation when a connector is exposed and that's not a happy situation here all right now here are different sizes of the connect uh, connectors you know, i could find you know a few of them and i just took a picture of those uh well don't look at the colors i would say look at the specifications on the box of course right here there's a picture I tried to focus, but uh, you know, best as I could. Here's the plastic housing, and here is the metal thread. Now, uh, there was one couple of situations that we had is that uh, someone was trying to screw that on uh, to the connectors, and this thing just wouldn't stay. It is because that metal part fell out. So pay attention to that, okay? Uh, um, it's a good thing that it happened so that lets us talk about it uh because if this thing didn't happen i 
there's a chance that I would forget to talk about that kind of stuff. Make sure that the whole thing is intact, that the metal thread is inside there. All right. All right. Uh, well, this would be a picture of this box right here from the side that I took. And what does this thing say? Listed as a pressure type wire connector, pressure type wire connector for use on solid and or stranded wire combinations. And this box gives you a little bit of a picture of what's good uh, and what's not with this thing here. All right, combinations, minimum three wires of 22 gauge. 22 gauge, remember if the gauge goes up, the wire goes thinner. If the gauge number goes down, the wire goes thicker. So this one here in that box calls minimum three 22 gauge wires. If you have less than that, the thread, the thickness of the thread right here, might not be able to grab it properly. So you're not going to have a solid connection with this, uh, you know, with this, uh, why or not? Right. Maximum three of number 10 gauge. Right. And most applications in between one, two, three, 12 gauge, and four, 12 gauge, solid only here. Okay. Um, why do they say solid only? Well, if you're combining solid conductor and the stranded conductor, the stranded conductor tends to wrap around the solid one because it just doesn't have enough, uh, well, straightness into it or enough uh, body on it because stranded is flexible. Uh, so it would have a tendency to wrap around. And as you, as you twist that connector, the thread might actually cut through some of the strands. So you might have a connection that is not uh, properly made. Right? Uh, now, one to five gauge 14, you can actually, in that connector on that's in this box that you bought, like for example here, you can fit five gauge 14 wires. That's a lot. One to five gauge 14. Or four gauge 14 with two gauge 16. So they are giving you a little bit of a picture of what thing is as far as the size of that. So two things you want to accomplish. You want to accomplish that you have enough meat on that, so to speak, quote unquote, on those uh, wires. So the thread is actually able to make a connection and grab it properly. But you don't want this thing to be the whole assembly of wires. You don't want them to be too thick that this diameter of the thread, it just won't be able to lock onto it. And uh, consult ideal, this is the ideal uh, company here to, uh, and there's, you know, some of the other information here, but that's as far as the sizes. All right, now I'm going to leave, not, not leave yet, uh, but uh, make sure you watch some of those videos. It's giving, it's, it's going to give you a, uh, a little bit of a picture uh, of, of what's going on. And when is, we see each other tomorrow, maybe, or some other time, you know, just if you have any questions, some of those are short videos, it's four minutes, two minutes, all right? Uh, uh, I'm giving you this information, use it to your advantage, all right? Now, also, what I have noticed that a lot of us are still struggling, and here comes the drum roll. Oops, come on. Kaboom. A lot of us are still struggling with, I can see it by the tests, I can see it by the quizzes. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to drill you into things, put it in the scale, yeah. As a matter of fact, I said throw the range on the scale. Right. And I say the range on the scale, just so, so we could, <laughs> you, you know, you could remember it better. All right. So what we're going to do before we go, we're going to um, take a few scenarios. And I have this thing set up in 
pretty cool way. It's, this is the Photoshop. If I press the Control T for the transform, I can move the needle whichever I want, whichever way I want. Okay, so let's say the meter is selected with the range at the range of 500 and we are measuring voltage. Okay, the, the meter is selected to a voltmeter. Let's say to make specific, take specific, let's say it's set up for DC voltage and it's pre-selected to the range of 500 volts, which means we can measure the voltages of up to 500 volts. And let's say that the needle has swung somewhere here. Okay. So that would be the indication by the meter. The range is 500. What is the voltage? And we're just doing this thing live right now. So what's the first thing that we have to do? And Amit had the right idea right here. Put it in the scale. Throw the range on the scale, just like you, uh, just like you are. Uh, yeah. All right. So somebody said Dale said 300 volt, 360 volts DC. Let's let's just go step by step. All right. Let's see if that's the case. The range is 500. Okay, so which would be the most convenient way of of doing this? Let's say we pick the top scale. We pick the top scale. All right. So the top scale says two fifty. Right. So throw the range on the scale. Throw the range on the scale. Let me just uh, use a pencil here. Do I have it? So the range is 500. The scale is 200, 250 that we decided to use. Throw the range on the scale. So we go throw oh, uh, here. So it would be the range, which would be 500. On the scale, let's say we choose the 250. So that's going to give us the multiplier of two, right? So whatever this thing shows on this scale, we have to multiply it by two, and that is going to be our reading. All right, so what is the needle showing on the scale of 250? What is the number? 50, 100, 150, 175, or somewhere here, because this is 200. Let me just get a different pointer here. All right, so right in the middle between 150 and 200, this would be 175, All right? 150, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75. So we just, I just established that the smallest division is five. So 150, 175, the number, on the scale is being shown as 180. And we just have to multiply that by two. 180 gives us 360 volts. That's what Dale has said. Bang on, all right? Very good, all right? Before I let you go, this is going to be a short lesson here today. Let's see if we can get the same, if we can get the same result if we choose a different scale. So just, you know, 500 divided by 50. That's going to give us 10. All right. If we choose the scale of 50, All right, so we divide, so uh, we use the scale of 50 right now. Let's see if we can get the same reading. All right. 
Okay. So throw the range on the scale. We are throwing the 500 over 5 right now instead of 250, and that's going to give us 10. And 10 is the... Um, uh, 10 would be the multiplier. Let me just erase this thing here. Here. Okay, what is this thing showing here? Okay. Again, here, pick. Okay. All right, I'm just going to erase this. Boom. Oh, it's just the wrong color, but that's okay. So let's uh, let's get a pencil here. Just go step by step, so I don't assume that everybody's getting things. Uh, no, let me just here choose. So we're doing this five hundred range is still five hundred, right here, and we are choosing the range of fifth, the scale of fifty. So. Throw the range on the scale. Throw the range, which is 500, that is selected by the selector switch on the meter, on the scale. And this time we're going to choose the middle scale to give us the reading. And we're going to throw it over the over 50. And that is going to give us 10. What does that mean? This means that whatever the needle is showing on that scale, we'll have to multiply it by 10 to get the measured voltage. All right. Okay. So let's see here. What is the needle showing? The needle hasn't changed. Nothing has changed. The wrench is the same. The power supply or the volume, you know, it's still the same. Nothing changed. We're choosing different scale. Remember, by using the 250 that gave us 360 volts let's see if we can get the same because it should be the same right all right so let's see here our multiplier is 10. what is the needle showing us here's 0 10 20 30 okay 30 1 30 and 40 so 35 should be here one two three four five right here so that means the smallest division on that scale is representing one so uh, 30, 31, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this one is showing 36. The number is 36, but we have to multiply it by 10, and it's going to give us 360. All right, so that's how we read this thing. I want you to be able to read the analog meter before you leave the school. All right. So tomorrow we're going to some do some uh, more reviews. We're going to talk about the assignment. Maybe I can show you the, you know, because we have gone over the three-way switch. Uh, we're going to have a little discussion on what's happening with the assignment. I want you to be able to do the assignment properly. Um, and we'll talk about some of the cases that will happen, uh, will happen there. So if you get a low mark, don't worry. We can still, uh, you know, I want you to be able, it's more important to me that uh, you do the thing properly and you know what's going on then me being a tough guy on marking you and being you know uh, uh you know just you know, i'll explain this thing to you when uh, when we get there uh, tomorrow in in person all right so <clears throat> uh yeah this is uh that's that, that's the lesson for today we still have to do one more topic and I'm I'm postponing that a little because I'm gathering a little bit more information on that. I just want to give this thing to you properly, not just a uh, you know, little bit. All right. So uh, that's uh, that's it for today. And I will see you in person tomorrow. Um, and have a rest, uh, well, wonderful rest of the week. And as I always say, what day is today? It's almost Friday because every day is almost Friday. Okay, thank you guys. And if I could just find the button to finish this class here, to stop that. <laughs> All right, have a great, have a great one. Thank you guys. Uh, stop. Now I want to end. Uh, Alt Q, end meeting. Thank you guys, goodbye.